Hi there and welcome to a video on time management. The principles of time management for me are summed up by a section of Stephen Covey's book, The Law of the Farm he calls it. Uh, Stephen Covey wrote such uh, titles as uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People and another great book on mainly on time management called First Things First, I'd recommend them. But he goes through a section where he talks about uh, life on a farm and uh, if you think about it, on a farm if you sow a crop, like corn or wheat or whatever, for a successful crop, uh, a range of action needs to be taken by the farmer in a careful, consistent, diligent way over a long period of time. So the quality crop is built up over a long period of time and can't be rushed through or short-circuited. A good harvest is only possible due to an ongoing effort through the whole process. You can't fake growing a good crop on a farm. A farmer cannot plant a crop, then sit back and relax for several months, and then madly throw some fertilizer and water on it just before the end, and still expect to reap a good harvest. It just doesn't work. And that's a biblical principle in Galatians that says a man reaps what he sows. Sounds fair. Now if we compare that to uh, being a student, let's compare a farmer to a student and let me show you how uh, these principles work for students as well. If a farmer plows the soil, that might be the equivalent of a student setting up a study area in their house which is nice and quiet and where the student has all they, all they need for a successful study. Uh, fertilizing the soil might relate to the listing all the topics to be studied so it's clear what has to happen. Uh, planting the seed, uh, the student needs to revise class notes. Uh, watering the crop, um, the student needs to study major examples and go over and over their notes so they're really familiar with them. Eliminating weeds, well the student also needs to memorize rules and formulas because if they don't know the rules and formulas then uh, it's hard to go well in a test for example. Now checking the growth of the crop as it goes along to see if it needs more fertilizer or to more water or whatever, checking the growth might be a bit like a student checking their understanding by uh, seeing how they go on, on uh, exam style questions, the sorts of questions that are, that are at the end of each uh, exercise in a chapter. And uh, at the end if they've done all those steps along the way in a diligent fashion, the farmer gets to harvest the crop and hopefully a good crop and the student gets to successfully complete the exam or successfully hand in an assignment. So a lot of parallels there. So for students, let's sum up. Starting your assignments well before the due date is the key. Look at all that it allows. It allows plenty of time too collect all the necessary information to just get an idea of the scope of the assignment, how big it is and how long it's going to take. Uh, if they're not sure, if a student isn't sure about a certain aspect of the assignment, whether we, to include some, in, some sort of information or to exclude it or just to focus on a particular part of it, they, they've got the time, if they've uh, started well before the due date, to ask guidance from their teacher and they can decide different ways of presenting the final version. They've got the time to choose just the, the best way they want to present it and to do their very highest quality work. So if you do things right at the last minute, they're very unlikely to be the best work that is possible for you. And starting your revision well before the exam date. I know it's almost unheard of for students to do this, but studying well before the exam is on allows plenty of time to revise all the topics to know them thoroughly. There's nothing like that confidence of going into a test uh, knowing that you know the work backwards and upside down and you're ready for anything. You get to memorize the rules and formulas so you don't mind if they don't necessarily provide them in the test because you know them anyway because you've studied thoroughly. Giving yourself time to practice plenty of exam style questions so that if the, the test wants to be tricky or the teacher wants to be tricky then you've seen those, style, those same style questions before and you can respond confidently. And you can also ask from, for help from the teacher if you're stuck. It's a bit hard to help, ask for help from the teacher at 11.30 the night before the test. Okay, I've got a little uh, story for you here. Let's uh, set up some example tasks that uh, are happening for a student or a couple of students I'm going to talk through. Task one is uh, due in five weeks time. Task two is due in four weeks time. 
Task 3 is due in three weeks' time, and there's a bit of an exam week just when all those assignments are due. Now, that's not an un unheard of uh, scenario for students. A lot of tasks are, are given well in advance, and uh, often pretty much everything's due in about uh, week 6 or 7 or 8 of each term. So uh, things can happen exactly like this. Let's compare two students, a tale of two students, not a tale of two cities. But uh, we've got student A, and this student is... Uh, working according to the time management principles we were just talking about, getting in early and uh, getting things done. So they might attempt task one as soon as they get it, knock over it, knock it over in one week. Even if it's due in five, doesn't mean a student isn't allowed to knock it over in one week and complete that task. Then for task two, when they get that one, they can complete that within a week. I mean, a week is a good solid time to complete an assignment. And as soon as they get task three, uh, they've completed that in a week's time as well. I know it's uh, pretty rare for a student to do this, but look at, look at what uh, how that pans out for their time management. Uh, with the exams coming up, they have two full weeks of exam preparation, and that would do a pretty good job of um, preparing for that exam in lots of different ways, doing plenty of practice questions, etc., asking for help if they're stuck. They've got time to do that. Let's have a look at student B. They might have a pretty nice time for a couple of weeks and start the first task a couple of weeks before it's due, which is understandable, but suddenly they've got three tasks to do at once. Okay, so they've, uh, they've worked on task one. They've actually got it done a week before it's due, which is handy, but they've actually got a couple of other tasks as well. They really need to start task two before they've finished task one. Now, that leads to a scenario here. Can you see this section here? They're trying to do two assignments at once, which is never a really great uh, scenario. Uh, multitasking has its, uh, <laughs> has its proponents, but uh, really it doesn't work all that well in the end, studies have shown. So they're trying to do two assignments at once there, but they get the task two done uh, a half a week uh, before it's due, a few days before it's due, but they're also rushing to try and get task, task three done. They've just done trying to do, trying just got through trying to do task one and two together and now they've got to do task two and three together. So that's not going to lead to great quality work for each of those tasks. So they might be taking shortcuts already. But have a look, that really only leaves them, even if they're able to do task three and a bit of study at the same time, that really only leaves them with a couple of days study before a major uh, exam week. And have a look at the comparison between that and uh, the amount of time that student A gave for their studies. So really, it's likely that student B, because just because of their time management, they're still completing all their tasks and still sitting for the exams, but just because of their time management uh, procedures and strategies, uh, student B is only really getting done a quarter of the examination preparation that they would hope to do. So I think I'd, uh, I know which uh, student I would be betting will be going better in the test. And rather than student A, I might be suggesting that this student is actually heading to be an A student. Hilarious. OK, let's uh, have a look at some other features of time management. The, the ability to de delay gratification. Now, that's a fancy term for being able to put off until later the good things that you enjoy in life. So rather than having a relaxing time as soon as you get an assignment and worrying about it later, getting on with it straight away is an example of delaying your gratification. And it's a great principle for not only studying but later in life as well. If you can save up for something that you really like, you're not paying high interest rates by putting it on your credit card. So if you can delay your gratification in life, uh, that's a good thing to do. Now, the ability to work when you don't have to. The question is, what do you do on an afternoon where you could do nothing? If you can make yourself work on that weekend or that afternoon when you've got not much on, not nothing due for a long time, that's the key to great time management, and that gives you c control of things. You don't, you might not ever go close to uh, missing a deadline if you can work when you don't have to. Uh, part of this is listing tasks in order of deadline, whether they're the important tasks or the lesser important tasks. Just go in order of deadline. I'd recommend. Uh, give each task a home. It's it's not as effective to say, oh yeah, I'll do that assignment a bit later, you know, because you might not get around to it. You might even forget about it and suddenly people are handing in assignments at school or there's a test on and you've forgotten it's on. Give each task a home, as in write it in your diary in a, on a specific day when you're going to attempt that task or complete that task. 
when you've got your list of uh, tasks in order of deadline, start the first task. I'd encourage you as soon as you can. It's, uh, it's a little bit strange at first, but it, you'll love the control it gives you over your life. Now, as soon as you've uh, finished the first task, start the next task. Even if it's not due for a couple of weeks, you'll be glad you did. You can even gloat to your friends that you've already completed some tasks. That's a good feeling as well. And you're, if you follow these time management principles, you get to finish a task when you've done a great job, when you're totally happy with a task, an assignment, or studying for a test thoroughly or whatever. Let's say it's an assignment. You're really proud of that assignment, and you can stop then. Um, and it's uh, unlikely that you're going to be doing a great job if you're stopping because it's one o'clock in the morning and you need some sleep. You know, that's not a great reason for finishing a task. Finish a, finishing a task uh, when you've done a great job is a terrific feeling. And that's uh, my principles of time management. I hope that helps. Um, and we'll see you again sometime for some uh, other maths videos, particularly at peterblakemaths.com. But all the best with your studies, not only in maths, but all different subjects will be helped by following those time management principles we've discussed. Thanks a lot for listening. See you next time.